sold 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 we sold our next car and are turning one thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars series it didn't take too long but now for this video we're gonna be covering how much we sold it for how much we have so far built up in the series and i will say i'm recording this after the rest of the video and as a sneak peek we already got our next car so stick through the video to see exactly what it is and what the journey was all right guys let's get to it what's up my name is jamal from flipping university in this channel i help people that might not have too much mechanical experience go from immature to expert flipping cars so that they can build a life of freedom and first of all let's go over how much we sold the last car for now if you didn't check it out yet you can check out the video there wasn't much that we really had to do with the car it was basically just a detail job and even with that it wasn't even a huge detail job i probably only put like maybe three hours in total into it for like getting the car ready and everything like that but we ended up selling it for thirty five hundred dollars and i bought it for twenty three hundred dollars so that gave us a quick profit of twelve hundred dollars with very minimal work and beforehand we had about four thousand dollars built up with the series so now tagging on top of that another twelve hundred dollars on top of that what does that give us a little over five thousand dollars now starting from only a thousand bucks and basically doing no work with most of the cars that we got and even having a bit of a hiccup along the way with one of the cars that we got but now we're going to be going over to the auction to see what we can come up with and i am going to be going to the different auction this time i want to try the Mannheim. i haven't went there in a very long time i'm going to try the Mannheim in new jersey that's pretty close to me not crazy close it's probably like an hour and a half but i just want to see what the options are like we're going to go there and let's see what we can come up with maybe we can get something really good there all right guys so we're here at a different auction this is the Mannheim in new jersey it's the new york metro one and i will say i'm kind of like iffy about the fact that i came here just because really not all the cars i'm going to be checking out the wall that i thought that was supposed to be checking out is actually going to be here they have a different thing with Mannheim. i, I, can't, I didn't come in a while but they have a different thing where it's called ove where a lot of dealerships they're not just gonna post up the cars to be able to run through the auction they're gonna post it up on ove which is like an online auction that Mannheim hosts and really if it was gonna be an online auction type of thing. I would just use ACV auctions, which is a lot more thorough than Mannheim and usually has better pricing and everything. So realistically, I mean, I pulled up a bunch of cars that I'm supposed to be checking out. And realistically, now I probably only have like 10 when I thought I was gonna be checking out like 25 or so. So we'll see how the cars come up. If anything, I'm just gonna extend the video and just combine things between this auction day to an auction day in the desert I would usually go to, but we'll see how it goes. Now, this is the first one we're gonna be checking out. This is a 2000 Honda Accord. Has 119,000 miles on it. Looks like the engine's already popped open, so we'll see if it even starts. I'm guessing somebody probably already tried to start it up. And yep, this one doesn't even start up. So, gonna pass on this. Let's see what the next one's looking like. What I don't like here too is that all these cars are parked like right next to each other. So it might be kind of hard to even take some of them out. It's not all of them are like this, but this lane specifically, like they're really compressed and parked together. Okay, so here's the next car that could be possible in our price range. This is a 2005 Infiniti FX35 all wheel drive two. Let's see how the condition is. Got a little bump on the side there. Looks like somebody also plastic dipped the wheels. Got some of it peeling off already. Okay, got a little red wrap on the side too. Overall, good looking car though, not bad. You already know the deal though, does it start up first and foremost? Ooh, I like the color of this interior too. Got a little rip on the side, but not too bad. It also smells like butt cheeks in here. But nope, it doesn't start up. I do like how this interior looks though, low key. Okay, on to the next one. This is a 2007 Honda Fit. This has, let me see how much miles. It has 192,000 miles on it. So for a Honda, nothing too crazy. It is all black. Looks like it needs a detail. But let's see the other side. Overall, it looks like it's in good condition. Again, the annoying thing is there's not much room here. So if it does start up and everything, it's not even like we could do too much with it. I'd have to go moving this car out of the way, moving that car just to try to take it for a test drive. But let's see if it even starts up. 
okay it does start good gotta turn everything on to make sure it all works let's have to see if there's any codes in the system and as a really quick thing too what i do like about this auction and a couple other auctions especially in manheims is that they have trackers in the cars so because these auctions are a little bit bigger let's say this one it actually has like a total of 3,000 cars in the lot so it could make it hard you know to find the exact car that you want especially if someone ends up jumping in the car test driving it and then leaving it in a different spot so you know these trackers are usually good for that usually i mean if you jump in the car and you see this in the obd scanner slot then that's what this is you just pull it out and you can still put your scanner in to scan up the codes and everything just make sure that when you're done scanning up the codes and everything you put it back in there so you know other people could track the car too all right, so there actually isn't any codes in the system besides a misfire code. So overall, it's actually looking pretty good. And there's no codes that's been reset or anything as well. And from what I see, it looks like the AC, it's not the coolest. It probably could use a bit of a recharge, but the AC still works, so it's all good with that as well. That's another big thing you have to make sure that you're checking with each season. Like, you know, during the summer, of course, you need to make sure, check each thing, like make sure that the heat is good too, if you can. But of course, during the summer, if you're in a hot spot, you need to make sure that you check in the AC. And this, in the winter, make sure you check in the heat, stuff like that. That's gonna be big for when, you know, you wanna sell the car later on, or, you know, if you're just trying to take the car home later. But so let's pop open the hood, see what it's looking like under there. Again, I mean, to be honest, what I think is gonna end up happening is like, let's say, if everything is looking good with the car, I'm probably gonna end up having to come back after I move a couple other cars out the way just to like take this for a quick test drive and then you know just come back to it later okay now of course just check under the hood we're just gonna check for the main stuff like checking under the engine cap seeing if there's any sloth underneath that's all good put that right back gonna check under the engine dipstick Again, just like with most of the other videos, I'm just gonna put up a screenshot just so you guys know what it looks like if things don't look good. And let's say if there's like a milky residue, that's basically what it looks like. We're also gonna be checking to see if there's any leaks, if there's any like big things popping up and oil leaks around. For that, I'm actually gonna put on my flashlight after the, I actually shoot the video just so I can see if there's any leaks coming up. But after that, also just gonna check underneath. looking for any leaks under the car and that's all good and then you're also gonna be checking to see how the rust is and it looks like there's a little bit of surface rust on the bottom you're mainly gonna be looking around these areas right here to see if there's any like frame rot all right so this is the next one I can barely see it with this one too it looks like this been sitting here for a while as well but it's a 2011 dodge journey this one has let's see 126,000 miles on it let's see how the condition is has a little scratches and whatnot on the back there also on the side here we'd have to do something about that that's looking pretty ugly and how is the interior looking Okay, you got the nice three rows. That's pretty useful, especially the people around me. I mean, honestly, I will say, I mean, the nice sporty cars are cool and everything, but you can't really go wrong when you have like the three seaters, like the three row seaters and the vans and stuff like that. Those are always going to sell. Like people always need cars like that too. But let's see if it starts up. Looks like it's pushed to start. And yes, it does. Okay, let's see how we're looking with this one. Gonna read the codes. It looks like there is a check engine light on. All right, so I'm definitely just gonna pass on this one. I mean, if it's just a couple of codes, it's not too serious, it's not bad to me, but this one, it has a lot of codes and it's not even just like simple codes, it's also like transmission codes and stuff for one of the gears, so I'm not gonna chance it, I'm just gonna pass on to the next car. Okay, here's the next one. This is the next one. This is a 2007 Infiniti M35. I didn't really see it too much in picture, but it looks like the front bumper is like low key falling off the front side. So we'd have to do something about that. Of course, that looks pretty ugly. Looks like, again, I'm guessing someone probably painted over these wheels, got the black paint over it. But overall, it does look like it's in pretty good condition. Let's see if it starts up. 
Oh, and the interior seats are busted. We'd have to do something about that and not, not just some regular stitching type stuff. That's, that's too busted for that. But let's see if it starts. And yes, it does. Good start. Is that gonna go away, the engine light? No. All right, let's see what that's on for. And nope, looks like that's not gonna happen with this one either. There's, there's like a decent amount of codes and the main code of all of them is like a catalytic converter problem. The P420 code, I believe. So I'm just gonna stay away from this one as well. There's just one more car we're gonna check out. Hopefully we could have one car at least to bid on while we're out here. So I didn't just completely waste my drive, but we'll see. We'll okay, see what so it looks like. This is the next one. And the last one is a 2010 Subaru Legacy. It has 216,000 miles, which is a good amount of miles, I will say, for this car. So we'll see how well the person that had this car beforehand actually maintained it. These cars could take a decent amount of miles, actually, if they had like the things like the coolant, like basically like the cooling things in the car, like well maintained and stuff. These cars are overall like semi-reliable <laughs> if, if those things were maintained well and the car is overheating or anything like that. But the car does look like it's in good condition on the inside and out. And I can see it's already running and it's already a check engine light on. And all right, this is probably gonna be a dub. <laughs> it's already saying the oil temperature is pretty high. And we'll, we'll just scan what the codes are showing just to see what it's like. Okay, yeah, so I kind of figured, but this definitely isn't happening. I mean, there's all the worst codes that you'd want or you'd not want to see in a car is showing up here with transmission codes and there's even like, you know, oil temperature type codes and stuff. So that's, that's not happening. So I guess we're going to the next auction, huh? All right, so here we are back again at the auction. This is basically a home sweet home with the Odessa auction in Long Island. As you could see, there wasn't much of great cars that we could get in the other auction in Mannheim. I mean, to be honest, usually it was more cars. Like the last time I went, which was a decent while ago last year, there was a lot more cars to choose from from the auction there. But it seemed like they kind of switched it to a lot of things are going through through the online auction hosted by Mannheim. So it is what it is. But now we're gonna start checking through the cars here. There is probably like 20 cars to check through from what I saw when I started going through the whole run list and everything. So let's see what the next one is. All right, so this is the first one. And doesn't it look so beautiful? It's a 2008 Honda Pilot. And this thing is in mint condition. Now nah, let me stop. Obviously this thing is banged up. I didn't see it in the pictures. I will say when I'm going through like the run list before I come, I don't go crazy looking through the pictures. Like I try to make it quick and I'll basically see it when I get there. So <laughs> this is obviously not gonna be one of the cars I'll be bidding on though. So let's see what's next. All right, now this is the next one. This is a 2005 Honda Odyssey, has just about 200,000 miles on it. Does look like it has yeah, some weird imperfections in the front there. And the hood is open, which honestly usually means that the car probably has to get jumped or something, but let me see if I can start it up. Yup, and that's exactly what it means. Gonna pass on this. All right, now this is the next one. This is a 2010. I believe it was a 328i. It only says three series here, but I'm pretty sure it was a 328i when I checked through the listing. And yet it has 127,000 miles. It's all blacked out. Let's see how the condition is. You have 328i. It's a little paint fading in the back there. And looks like that side mirror is broken off as well. But overall looking pretty good. Let's see if it starts up. Nope, that's a dub. And really quick too, I kind of have to say this for most of the videos that I'm making like this, but I mean, for the people on my channel, they already know what it is. Like I don't go for the cars that don't start. For the people that are just seeing this channel and just this is basically the first time you're seeing this video and seeing, you know, what I'm making with the whole series and all. I don't go for the cars that don't start, mainly because of the fact that they cleared the codes in the system. When a car has to get jump started or something, all the codes that are in the system gets cleared out. And for me, especially when it's at the auction, I really don't like to take the chance with it because any code could be in the system that could have been erased and there's dealers out there that will literally kill the car battery just so that the codes get cleared away. You know, they do sketchy things like that. So 
just letting you know and i would suggest i mean if, if you do want to follow the same route to kind of reduce your risk a little bit you can do that too all right let's hope we start getting a little bit better chances going forward because the first couple cars have not gone that great but this is the next one is a 2007 nissan xterra has 105,000 miles on it and let's see what the condition is like okay looking good gotta say i kind of like these xterras let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you kind of like just just like them in general I mean, I've never had one before, but it just seemed like good utility vehicles. You know, I'm not even that much of a truck person, but I don't know. Just the look of this, it just seems like something you could be in the dunes going crazy with. But okay, let's see. I think this one's going to start. All right, finally got one to start. There is an engine light on, though, so let's see what it's on for. All right, so... This part is actually gonna basically tie into what I was talking about before with the battery dying and stuff like that. This car also has the codes cleared. Looks like I went into the system, I scanned the codes myself. I have an OBD scanner with me. And for everyone that's going to any auctions or checking out any cars, you definitely need to get one too if you don't have one. But basically with every single scanner, just about, you have the option to be able to check the iron readiness codes. And through the iron readiness codes, you can see if the codes are cleared or not. And if they're cleared, they'll look like this. With every car going forward, I'm gonna be having that. But this car looks like the codes are cleared. And again, that's what some dealers will do to try to get you with the car. So I'm just gonna pass on it. We're gonna to go to the next one. And again, for the people that already check out this channel a good amount, I know you guys are like, hey, I already know this stuff. Like, But listen, there's people that are just checking out the channel now. And you know, you gotta bring out the stuff for the people that are just seeing it too. There's plenty of people that don't know this stuff already. But like I said, yeah, let's go to the next car. All right, and here is the next one. It's a 2003 Mazda MPV. It's basically like Mazda's minivan type thing. Let's see how this one's looking. Oh, they say that the engine and training is in 100% condition. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll see if we could hold them to that. Overall, looks like it's in pretty good condition though. I would say the front hood looks like the clear coat isn't that strong. It looks like it's faded out a little bit, but let's see if it even starts up. And yes, it does. Or at least we got some cars that are starting now, but again, this is another one that does have the check engine light on. Let's see what this one is on for. And nope, again, codes are cleared. Not gonna happen, on to the next one. All right, so for this next one, we got a nice little family van again. 2008 Chrysler Town and Country it has 140,000 miles on it. Again, these things are basically always going to sell. Really, regardless of what the economy is like, like there's always going to be families out there that need some vans. But okay, does this one start? Okay, it starts. All right, you already know the game. It does have a pretty good amount of lights on, actually. It's the engine light on traction control abs person couldn't even fill the tank up looks like this thing is about to just pass out with the gas but yeah let's see what the lights are on for okay this is getting kind of crazy i don't know if this is like national clear the codes day or something but not only do these cars always have engine lights on but there's still codes that's been cleared from them so who knows what other things are on the system but um yeah i guess we're going to the next one we're blasting through these cars pretty quick uh, at this point i <laughs> I'm almost feeling like just jumping right into the car and not even really checking the thing out just to see if it actually starts up and all. But we're going to just try to speed through this. And that actually looks pretty ugly right there. And let me check underneath. Okay, it doesn't rust all the way through, but that's a pretty bad dent right there. And yeah, it looks like it got sideswiped and everything. I'll just start it up to see what's up, see what the full story is. It does have a current inspection until next year but whoever was driving this oh and it's a manual transmission now we're not going for it no one's gonna buy a car like this on a manual transmission it's gonna be sitting for days scratch that years all right so we're gonna keep it moving we, we literally went through that whole lane of cars and we got basically nothing to bid on but again you never know we can still get something there's a 2010 hyundai accent has 122,000 miles on it This thing is so tiny. But all right, let's see if it starts up. Okay, it does start and it doesn't have any codes showing. 
up right now. There's no lights coming up, but let's scan it up and let's see what the full story is. Okay, it's running nice and smooth too. It doesn't look like there's any leaks around anywhere. Of course, we're just gonna pop under the engine cap, check to see what that's looking like. All right. And the dipstick, also looking good. All right, so far, so good. We're also gonna check under the cars, no leaks. All right, so far, so good. Looks like we could take this on a quick test drive. I will say again, when you're not really supposed to be trying to drive cars around much with this auction, you're technically supposed to just drive them front and back, going into drive and reverse. But again, I, I gotta, I mean, you gotta try to drive the cars around a little bit at the auction. And I mean, if they say something, it is what it is at this point. Like I can't be not checking out the transmission and everything when I'm gonna go buy a car and make sure you do a thorough check before you buy any car. All right, and everything's looking good with this car. It literally seems like it'll just be a quick flip if I did get it under what the budget would be for this car. And I'll be putting up with like what the budget will be at the max of each car as well when I'm about to go bidding on the cars. And I'm also gonna break down how I get to what my max should be for the cars because someone brought that up in the comments, like how I get to that number. So I'll go over that in a little bit as well, a little bit later in the video, but Let's keep going through the rest. Okay, so here's the next one. It's a 2010 Ford Fusion. has 108,000 miles on it. Got a little writing on the windows with this one. Runs 100% highway miles. New car trade. Oh my goodness. This better be in mint condition. But let's see what it's looking like. Oh, the steering wheel feels really bad. I don't know if it's brushing up against the mount right here, but let me try to scan it up and see if there's anything else. Well, nope, not gonna happen anyway. The codes are cleared, so it is what it is. Okay, next one, 2010 Mazda CX-7, 180,000 miles. Does have a current inspector sticker on it as well. Okay, looking good. You already know the game, I gotta speed this up too. It looks like the lane's just starting to start up. Let's we'll see if it starts. Yes, it does. And this one isn't coming up with any lights. But let's scan it up. Okay, so good news. This one actually doesn't have any engine codes or anything like that on either. So, so far so good. It does look like the windows are having some problems. This one right here, the right window. Most of the other ones are working all right though. And it looks like the blower motor is probably messed up. So that would be another thing that needs to be fixed. But let's pop the hood and see what's up. All right, well, it is running smooth. Under the engine cap looking good. Dipstick's looking good as well. Looks like there's not any leaks anywhere. Not under the car either. All right, so with this one, I did check it out. I did. A, I went for a test drive as well. Everything's looking good with the test drive and all, but honestly, this car would have to be going for a really good price for me to go for it. I mean, if it's just a couple of like small things, then I don't mind jumping into it. Again, I'm not like a huge mechanic. I, I, I don't mind fixing cars, but I don't like to be under the car all day fixing stuff. And this one has a couple different problems. Nothing huge, but it looks like the blower motor is bad. The AC compressor most likely probably needs to be changed as well and the window regulators is kind of messed up for a couple of different the different windows so it's a couple of different things nothing huge but like a lot of small things so unless it's where i'm getting like a really good profit margin for this car then i'm probably not going to go for it all right so this is the next one it's a 2008 ford focus has 148,000 miles on it Let's see how it's looking looking good it's in good condition and does it start up let's see Nope, that's a dub. By the way, I've been seeing a couple of you guys in person, actually, the people that have been watching the channel. And if you see me at the auction, don't hesitate to pull up. Like, you can say what's up and everything. 
you know, it's awesome to see the people that are actually watching the channel come up in person and saying what's up too, and seeing how the content is actually helping you guys. Let's go on with everything. All right, next one, 2006 Saab 93. Like I said, I think I'm about to just jump right in. It has 143,000 miles on it. Ooh, does the doors even unlock? Oh, okay, gotta get it from the back. No homo. This has a different type of way to start it. Very interesting. You start it right here. I actually have wanted to drive one of these before. They don't make these cars anymore, but uh, it's got a kind of a different vibe to it. It almost has like a cockpit vibe to it too. I like it. But let's see if there's any codes on the system. All right, so this actually isn't looking bad. There is one code that's up. It's for an ignition coil and well, it most likely is an ignition coil. And by the way, I would say if you guys are looking for a scanner and you don't want to spend like a lot of money for it, I would suggest the blue driver scanner. To me, it's like one of the, the good just starter scanners. It doesn't, it's not going to tell you everything, but it'll tell you the things like, you know, obviously the engine codes and everything, as well as ABS codes and like airbag light codes and stuff. And as well, if you're like a person that's kind of new to everything, all the fixing stuff, it'll also generally tell you the common fixes that's associated with each code. So I can show you like a quick screenshot of what it looks like when you're pulling it up, but it does help if you're someone that doesn't know a crazy amount about cars already. But yeah, this car is looking good so far. The AC is working, everything's working as it should. There is that one code in the system, but again, not too bad. But let me pop the hood and let's see what the rest is like. All right, this is how it's looking under the hood. Of course, we're just gonna check the regular things under the engine cap. As you can see, this is the turbo version. This thing has some crazy horsepower in it. I'm probably gonna take this to the races too. Now let me stop, but let me pop the dipstick. You already know we gotta get a good lip to the dipstick, make sure it's tasting all right. Dang, that tastes good. All right, let's check around the rest of the hood. Mainly checking to see if there's any leaks, any oil leaks, stuff like that. Hopefully you guys can still hear me, by the way, after the hood is open like that. No leaks underneath either. And there's still an inspection sticker on there as well. Oh, and by the way, there is a crack on the side view mirror also, so I would have to get that fixed. All right, so I'm gonna have to test out how it drives in a bit. <laughs> there was some guys that worked in the auction that basically just pulled up right behind me and I can't even get out now. But I'll just continue with everything and then at some point I'll just try to come back to this car to do a quick test drive. All right, so I was able to quickly test drive it and it's looking all good, so this will be another car I'll be bidding on. Okay, on to the next one. This is a 2011 GMC Acadia. Has 170,000 miles basically on it. It's a nice big car too. Looks like it's in good condition overall. Has a nice black paint. But let's see if this thing starts up. Smells like butt cheeks in here. But it does start. It does sound like the steering is a little bad. Yeah, the power steering pump might be going out pretty soon. So that might have to be changed. But let's scan the codes up, see if there's anything in the system. Ah, dang, it looks like the codes were cleared on this one as well. So gonna be passing on it. It sucks too because you can see there, it has a nice enter. It has a little TV on the top. This would have been a pretty cool car to have. It has a different sunroof underneath. And the enter, it's, this feels so roomy in here. But yeah, oh well, on to the next one. This is the type of stuff I talk about when I'm like, you can't get a, too emotionally attached to a car. Like, do not let your emotions... Hold on, let me flip this around for a second. But don't let your emotions get in the way of your purchases. Like, don't get too emotionally tied into a car. This is business, strictly business. Okay, next one. This is a 2009 Subaru Tribeca. Has 187,000 miles on it. Also looks like it should be in good condition. Yep, looking good. Okay, and the auction has officially started too. There's cars that are starting to go through the lanes and everything, so. Let's try to wrap this up soon. We just got a couple more cars to go. Oh, this starts up, but it runs really rough. We'll see 
How many codes are in this system? Oh, and the check engine light is blinking too. Yeah, nah, nah, it couldn't happen either. There's plenty of codes with this thing. Dang near every cylinder is misfiring in the car, so it probably would basically just need a new engine or something, or just need a lot of engine work. So next one, we just got a couple more left, and then we'll be bidding on the cars. All right, this is the next one. It's a 2010 Subaru Legacy. You can already see right there, the side mirror is just whacked off. And, oh, there's a good amount of body work that this thing needs in general. Um, let's see here. How's the back? Some scratches on the side as well. I mean, let's let's just start it up. You know, let's not give up too quick on the car. Let's just start it up. Maybe everything is looking perfect underneath, though. We'll say it stinks, too. Nah, I'm good. There's a nasty exhaust leak as well. And then this it seems like it's gonna need a lot of body work too, so I'm good. All right, there's one of the last cars here and then we're gonna start going through the auction lanes. This is a 2007 Nissan Xterra, 193,000 miles on it. This is save some time. I'm probably just gonna jump right into it, see if it starts and everything first. It does start, but it has a service light on. Let's see what it's on for. All right, so I just test drove the Xterra and it wasn't shifting good. It basically was like struggling just to get into reverse. So that's not happening. And that was actually the last car I was gonna check out. So now we're about to go over to the run lane and start bidding on the cars. And as a quick thing, now I'm just gonna introduce how I usually go about like what my max number should be. Generally what I do is I basically just work backwards. So whatever I know that I can sell the car for, let's say for whatever the car it is, and I can sell it for like $3,000 and I wanna make, let's say a thousand dollar profit, I work back. So let's say, all right, I want to make a thousand dollar profit. I can sell the car at 3,000. I want to be at max at 2,000, you know? So, and I cap my number right there. I don't go above that regardless. And that's my number all in as well. That's what's expenses with buy fees, with auction fees, with how much I got to put into the car and everything. So that's usually what I got my number from. But let's see what car we can come up with. We don't have a crazy amount of cars we're going to be bidding on. It's like three basically, but you never know, we'll see what comes up. All right, real quick, so the Mazda CX-7 actually just went by and I wanted to record it, but the dumb people at the auction, oh, I shouldn't say dumb, they're, just, they're probably just doing their jobs. I mean, I don't know if things just changed, but it is what it is. But they said that I couldn't record them while the cars were going through. So, I mean, with the next car, I'll probably just like point the camera down or something like that, just so that they can't see that I'm recording or whatever. But, um. Regardless, I it went too high anyway. It wasn't crazy amount over. I was trying to go max at fourteen hundred dollars for it, especially since it needed a little bit of work with the car, and it went up to like seventeen hundred dollars instead. So it went like three to four hundred dollars over what I was what I wanted to go for it. But um, anyways, it's one more car to go. It's going to be what was it? Um, the Hyundai Accent, I believe, the tiny little car. And let's see if we can come home with. <laughs> Well, we didn't get anything at the auction again. But as I said, I wasn't just gonna lie and say that we got something when we really didn't. We did get something, but what do you know? It wasn't from these auctions. It was actually from ACV auctions. Again, <laughs> what do you know, right? But this one, it was a really cheap car. It's an 04 Hyundai Sonata. I bought it for under a thousand bucks. I bought it for all in $900. I can't pick it up yet and I don't even know if I can actually pull up a full screenshot of it but if if anything I could basically just show you a screenshot of how much I paid and everything for the bill of sale just so you guys know I ain't making this up I can't really go in detail of exactly what the car is like now but it really doesn't need much work either so that's just a quick thing for the next video and if you are just wondering how you can get into these auctions yourself if you don't have your own dealership 
I did make a whole video explaining exactly that. You can just go to the link in the description below, type in your email, and you'll have the video sent directly to you. It's definitely a much cheaper way than having the whole dealership aspect. And if you are your own dealer, and you do want to get access to ACV auctions, then there, I actually will put a link in the description below too for where you can sign up. Honestly, I, I really do recommend them. As you can see, if you haven't seen some of my other videos, most of the cars I've gotten so far with this series have been through ACV auctions, so I definitely would recommend them. Oh, and I actually forgot to mention this earlier on in the video, but I did check you guys' comments out, all right? I was checking the comments. I saw that you guys did. Well, a lot more of you guys did prefer that I would actually do two cars instead of just one, instead of having all my eggs in one basket and trying to just buy one car. So I did follow what you guys were actually guiding me into here. It does make more sense, honestly. It would be a lot easier to sell two cars not easier but you get more profit for it and the car won't be sitting as long if you just have all of your money going into that one car and especially if the car is selling for like eight thousand dollars it could take a while to sell that and of course on that note since we do have a good amount more money to spend i am still going to be looking for another car to get to continue the series as well i'm not just going to be sitting on this one car by itself so look out for that as well but all right guys make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when the next video drops along the series and that's it till next time peace